In this video, I'll be creating an outdoor lamp with a built-in planner to freshen up your outdoor space. This is two in one, but if one fits you most, there's no reason you can't pick one and make it happen. I'll kick this off by building the planner first. To build this planner, I'll be using pressure treated two x four along with deck boards. To speed things up, I've already cut all the parts to size. After I build the planner frame, I'll then wrap it with these decking boards. I happen to like the look of this. It is a composite material, so it should last a long time. By the way, big thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. I think you'll be able to see what I'm doing then make the necessary changes you need to make if you wanted to make something like this. I'll start building the frame by gluing and using screws to join the parts together. I'll need two of these frames so the minute I finish with this one, I'll repeat the same thing and create a second one. The frames will be stacked on top of each other using these spacers that I cut. To join these without any hardware showing, I have a method you can use. For this particular step, hidden hardware is not important, but I think you can use this on many projects going forward. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is mark the holes that I wanna drill. Then I'll drill a hole big enough that's gonna accept the dowel. In this case, I'm gonna use a half inch dowel. So I'll drill a half inch hole. On the bit, you'll see I have blue tape, which is an indicator for me to stop as I'm drilling. While I've been drilling all these holes, let me tell you about today's sponsor, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you can take the guesswork out of cooking. You get pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorsteps. This is one of the best ways to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. Whatever your personal goals are, you can still stay on track with simple recipes and fresh pre-portioned ingredients that limit meal prep time and cut out the back and forth going to grocery stores. Every recipe includes fresh produce sourced directly from farmers. Depending on what you pick, you can whip up a meal in 20 to 30 minutes. It's easy with step-by-step -step instructions with photos to guide you along. Everything I've tried so far has been restaurant worthy, amazing. It's simple, you can cook what you need or cook enough for leftover. Go to hellofresh.com and use my promo code DIYCREATOR16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Now that I have the debris removed from the holes, I'll take the spaces and sit them in place. For this part, glue is optional. Now I'll use screws long enough to drive through the spacer and into the piece below. And I'll repeat this for the remaining parts. I'm using half inch dowels, so I'll use these half inch center. Now I'll line up the part above, then double check to make sure that it lines up as good as possible. Then I'll hit this piece and transfer the holes from the pins over to this. And this wood the indents are hard to see, but it's good enough for me to locate. I only have three of these dial centers, so I have to be pretty resourceful here. After I move the pins to the next spacer, I'll leave one pin in the first location as I move these pins around to the next spacer and just transfer all the markings. Now I'll take a half inch dial, place it in the hole, and then put tape on the bit. This way I have a depth indication. Now I'll flip the frame over and drill the holes that was previously marked. Dials can be quite tricky to work with, but in this case, I was a bit surprised that I managed to get this on the first shot. After doing a dry fit, I know everything is pretty good now to go ahead and glue up. I'll screw the bottom on and leave a quarter inch gap in between each plank. I 
I had a lot of back and forth with myself trying to figure out how to wrap this with the deck boards. My first thought was to use exposed screws, but the more I thought about it, I felt that I can pull this off with keeping everything hidden. I'll use these clips to start off the first row, and this is where the first piece of deck board is going to rest. Then I used hidden fasteners to set the spacing and also hold the boards in place. Mitering the corners give it the best look, but it also made it more challenging to wrap the box being that any imperfection to the frame can affect the way the miter joints close up. I didn't think about it at the time, but I could have gotten away from using the starter clips, which would have allowed me to squeeze these a bit tighter and get a better miter joint. The clip allows some flexing towards the bottom, so if I can eliminate that by driving a few screws in here and also tighten up that miter joint, I'm happy with that. With the deck board sitting just above the frame, I'll use screws from the inside, drive it through the 2x4 and into the deck boards. I measured the screws and the depth so if I'm drilling from the inside, I know how deep to go. This way I'm not going all the way through and know I have enough to hold the boards from the inside. I didn't miter the back of the planner because I didn't want to fight with it too much. But at the same time, I feel like the back of this would be up against the wall or just never as visible as the front. Here's a quick look at most of the parts that make up this lamp. I'll be using a 5 inch by 5 inch fence post along with the matching cap. After looking around, I was able to find this wall lamp that was approximately the same width of the pole. It wasn't my first choice, but you can use any lamp that has a base with the same width or less of this post. This first hole I'm drilling will allow the plate to sit flat because the screws stick out the back. The next hole is to allow the electrical wire to pass through. Now I'll measure off where I want the light switch to be. I use cardboard as a template to cut out the hole for the junction box. After tracing the holes, I then drill out a couple holes just outside of the rectangle on both sides. Then I'll cut the hole out so I can pass the junction box through. I'll repeat this one more time for the electrical outlet below the light switch. On the front side I have the holes for the light and on the back side I have the holes for the outlets. The cable that I have planned for this project didn't come in on time, but to keep things moving I'll share how I hook this up and I'll link the proper cable below. Now I'll get the wires into the junction box, strap them in, and peel off the jacket. Now that I have the wires inside the junction box, I slid them inside the post. Now I'll strip the conductors and connect them to the receptacle. At this point, the junction box is free inside the post and I need to tighten up the receptacle to that box. And just like the previous box, I'll make up the connection here at the light switch.
While I have the outlet tightened, I'll install a couple of self-tapping screws to hold the box in place. Now I don't have to worry about the junction box falling in when I remove the outlet. When it comes to the switch, I'll be using a water resistant cover. Moving on to the LED light, I'll route the wire from the switch to the lantern, make up the connection and attach it to the post. To power up the light and the outlet, I need to bring power to this. Just below the receptacle, I'll drill out a hole for this cable gland. Using this kind of connector is a way of bringing the wire through the post while keeping it watertight. And to make sure the cable is secured firmly, I'll use a clamp connector, connect it to the wire, tighten that on, and then screw this into the junction box. And finally, I'll make up the junction here by connecting the power cord to the outlet. Now I'll leave a little bit of slack inside the post and tighten up the connector. The more you tighten it, the more it'll grip the power cord. Here's a closer look at the post all wired up. When it comes to the looks of this, I want to dress this up a bit. I don't want everything to stick out like a sore thumb. So I'll go ahead and spray paint the post and also the switch cover. Here I'm putting on a dark walnut spray paint, which is a good color to sort of blend in and not demand too much attention. Now I have to carefully put everything back together and try to avoid scratching the paint. Now I'll take the post and work it into its position. Now I'll add a couple corner brackets to anchor this inside the planner. I took landscaping fabric to wrap the inside of the planner. This will at least keep the dirt contained, but also allow water to penetrate. Now that I have this all tucked away, it's ready for use. Now the inside is completely wrapped and it's ready for some plants. Now I believe this is a versatile build, one that you can put in your landscape, on a deck, patio, next to a shed, to a fence, pathway, and so on. Your imagination set the limitations. Not only is this a planner, but with the integrated light switch and waterproof cover, you can easily turn on and off the light just in case this is occupying the extension cord or the existing one.
I'm using potting soil to sort of keep the weight down and I'm also using some plants that I'm not sure if I'm going to keep in here so I'm not going to unpot them just yet but you can get a visual on what it looks like with plants. That'll do it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it.